Something's got a hold of us. Yeah. Yeah. The power of gratitude. Let that get a hold of you. Yeah. You know, we don't need to have a national holiday for thank, to be thankful. We're blessed every day that we wake up and we live in paradise. But let me tell you, I am so happy we do have a holiday specifically for Thanksgiving. The intentional focus of the entire country this week is on gratitude and thanksgiving. So just imagine, with all these people in our country consciously creating gratitude and giving thanks all at the same time, the collective is shifting. The vibration is rising. And we can use that vibration to be even more grateful, to be even closer to the one presence and the one power that is God and Goddess. What is it to be gratitude filled? Do you know? Are you expressing and feeling that gratitude every day? You can be grateful for things, for your possessions, for that awesome car you drive, but be grateful for the wonderful people in your life. Yes, please do that. Yes, yes, that's great. Gratitude is generally an affirmation of goodness. We all need goodness in our life. So let's do this together. Let's all rise up to gratitude as a state of mind and a state of consciousness that we feel gratitude just for being. When you find yourself in that place of spiritual maturity, freely expressing, loving all those around you, thankfulness and gratitude is what you have. Your experiences will change and shift to match your vibration. Consciously waking up every day and making the choice to live with an attitude of gratitude. And know this, it is absolutely your choice every single day. So together, let's make a commitment to do that. Rise, and let's live in an attitude of gratitude. We will be in sync. We will be in sync with the law of manifestation, the law of attraction, the law of abundance, and all the natural laws, co-creating your life with God. You'll know you have everything you need. You will begin to think differently. You'll begin to think from abundance, from prosperity, from infinite opportunities, rather than allowing challenges and circumstance to drive your life and to control your outcome. If you maintain that your needs are met, out of seemingly nothing, your life will change. Change your perception, change your feeling, and then just watch the abundance flow into your life. Practice gratitude, even on those days when you're not particularly feeling it. That's why we call it practice. So what exactly does that mean to say practice gratitude? I'm saying practice gratitude when it's the hardest. When you're feeling not very thankful, and you're thinking things are going wrong. It's just like going to a gym. It's a commitment we make. We want the results of being fit, being strong, being healthy, being vibrant. I know you guys, you want to drop that dad bod and have a rad bod. <laughs> Yet some days you get out of bed or you leave work and you say, maybe I'm just going to skip going to the gym today. I'm feeling a little tired. But oh no, don't you do that. Just do it. Get out there, get to the gym, work out, because you deserve to have that rad bod. 
same thing with living in gratitude. As you actually practice an attitude of gratitude, even at those times when you may not be feeling thankful, you're spreading kindness around the world in your life, just like tossing around confetti. I'm going to share a little personal story with you. My, the last couple of years of my mom's life, I was her caregiver. I took care of my mom 24-7. Her, she became uh, too frail to travel the steps of her house, so I moved she and I into a handicap-accessible apartment. And I cared for her. I'd never done anything like that except raise two boys. I wasn't a nurse. And it was challenging at times. It was frustrating at times. But I found a little sign, and I read it, and I said, oh, that's fabulous. I put it on the wall just above the head of Mom's bed. So every time I walked into her room, when she, she had a little doorbell, she'd ring for me. And when I would walk in there, I would read that sign. And I knew that all she needed was a little kindness and a little understanding. And that sign said, spread kindness like confetti. And it's right there in my office. You're welcome to come anytime and take a look at it. And it keeps my mom right there close to me. And it was such a blessing to be able to care for her in her dementia. And no matter how frustrating or scared she was, I knew if I could only treat her with kindness, it would all be okay. So now, there you're going to go, tossing that kindness around in, like confetti in your life and make a difference. You never know the difference it actually makes in somebody's life. Just that simple act of being kind. Being thankful and truly living in the attitude of gratitude. Your life's going to change. As gratitude becomes a habit, you will begin to notice more and more blessings in your life. Some that were there, but you just weren't aware of them. You'll find you are so very blessed. You'll be more powerful in your life because you'll be manifesting what you truly want. I'm living proof that that works because I have manifested such a wonderful life that I am so happy to be here. I'm so blessed and grateful to have a very loving spouse, to have two beautiful sons, two beautiful grandsons, and to be here as part of this vibrant, loving, truly amazing community. To be part of this awesome spiritual leadership team that is led by Reverend Dr. Temple Hayes. It's truly beyond all words. Thank you. You know, the beautiful thing when we tag team on platform is we never compare notes. We just usually give a title and then we flow where the spirit leads. And in meditation in my office this morning, I was meditating on the power of gratitude. The power of gratitude. What was the foundation of gratitude? And as we go into the holiday season, it's quite difficult for many people because the majority of people have dysfunctional families on one level or another. It's the honest truth. And it's just the reality. And you go into the holiday season, whether it be Christmas or Thanksgiving or New Year's even, though you don't hang out with your family on New Year's, I know. But you go in and you paint this pretty picture that it's going to be like June Cleaver and Ward Cleaver's family. <laughs> and it's not. The power of gratitude. What luggage the parents bring from their upbringing. What package you bring from your upbringing. And we can continue with music. I have a sh tiny story that someone in my family 60 years later still identifies with mother 
not buying her a prom dress. 60 years later, she had not exercised the power of gratitude. And you may ask, what is the power of gratitude? Thank you for your four people that were listening. In my meditation this morning, it came to me that it was forgiveness. Forgiveness really <laughs> is the foundation of all. Forgive your mother because she didn't buy you a prom dress. Forgive your daddy because you knocked you off a bicycle. But more importantly, for the power of gratitude is forgiveness. And it's forgiveness of yourself. Move in this holiday season with forgiveness of yourself. Because you can't exercise and go out and give nifty, nifty, grifty, thank you, gratitude away. Unless you've forgiven yourself. On whatever level that needs to be. Then you can forgive mama. You forgive daddy. You forgive your brothers. You forgive your sisters. You forgive your... Whoever has hurt you. But more important, step out in gratitude and forgive yourself. I ask you today to put your arms around yourself. And say, God, you're in me. You're as me. You're through me. I ask you to allow me to walk in gratitude, to walk in forgiveness. I now choose to forgive Richard. <laughs> Those watching online, everybody here is a Richard. <laughs> but forgive yourself. We have all come short on some of our journey. But that shortness doesn't define us. Allow that shortness to refine you. So, going into the holiday season, exercise gratitude because you have the power, the forgiveness of yourself, and walk in the forgiveness of everyone around you. Happy holidays. <laughs> we'll always be different here. I don't want to kill you, brother. I want to put life back in you, my friend. So he said to me, if I wanted to achieve what he had, as I asked him as a teacher, what do I need to do? I was 29, early in recovery. And he said, it's important every day to write down 50 things that you love about yourself. And that reality was as awkward as walking in life with these glasses on my face. <laughs> I remember many a time sitting there with four or five things. I remember many times in group and in therapy when somebody said, who are you? And I spent 25 and 30 minutes talking about someone else or something else because I had learned how to be uncomfortable with the relationship that I had with me. And yet every day, every day, I would write out 
the things that I was learning to love about myself. And I would sometimes force myself to keep writing, to put it down. And all of a sudden, it began like almost like I was in a dream because what I would write down on the sheet of paper, I might see someone at the grocery store or somewhere else, and they would say, oh, Temple, I love this blah, 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 blah about you. And I would think, how do you know I wrote that down today? It all started tying in. It all started coming together. You see, we are really here to carry our soul. And how we are trained often or programmed is to focus on our personalities. And that's what had happened to me. Either was negating my personality or drowning it in alcohol. But I was into my personality and the psychology of my life, which is fine, but it is not the end all of gratitude. The real power of gratitude comes from living what your soul is here to do. It is called an unedited life. It's not a chameleon. It's not to fit in. It's a determination that you will never do so, you see. When I was a teenager, I will always remember the day of sitting there with my grandfather across the room, and he was just staring at me. And I said, Papa, what is it? He said, nothing, Temple Ann. I just want to look at you. I just want to look at you. And on that journey, there were many times back then that I could not look at myself, really look at myself, or really breathe in my soul path through my eyes. You understand that? And so, obviously, I was in relationships where we didn't look at each other either. The number one language is not words. It's the eyes. It's the eyes of the soul that say what we know. And so, when I came here in 2003, and all I was going to do was fill in and do a talk and go home, 16 years ago, if I can remind you of that, it's like, how did I wind up here? What is this? And I was serving with two ministers. I was the associate. I walk in one day, and Reverend Allen's up here with his wife, Catherine, and there's that look again. Back from a teenager, ingrained in my soul, was what it's like when somebody really looks at you. And I went home and I said, I am ready for someone to look at me that way. I am ready for people to look at me that way. So I started looking at me again in the mirror and singing, you are the woman I always dreamed of, but we won't go into all that. (laughs) But I started really looking at me, a creation, more than a person, more than a preference, but as a manifestation of spirit. And in a short time, as life would have it, I'm in a relationship with a future wife that looks at me this way, with a community that looks at me this way, because you see me, and I see you, because we see ourselves as souls. Remember that in your life when you're into the chitter and the chatter and the converse and then the yada yada and can you believe this and that and they said and she said and we did and that happened. Oh my gosh, you know, and that one person got upset about blah, blah, blah. Catch yourself. You're in personality. Our mission is soul work. We are all old souls. Because if you were newbies on this journey, I don't know that you could handle all that we have going on. (laughs) 
We're old souls until you embrace that and you feel that, you see. Someone has often said, I'm not sure what grace is. What is grace? And what I say is, gratitude is honoring and acknowledging what you see. Give thanks for what you see and what you have right now. Celebrate that. Write out your 50 things. You're welcome to borrow these glasses if it will help you. Write them out. Then comes grace. Gratitude is the bridge to grace. Because when you're thankful and you're living in that energetic field and you're not immersed in your personality and all of that stuff, you can release a lot of the ego. Please don't let go of all of it. And you're carrying a dimension and an energetic presence in your life. And then you have grace because you can see where it all connected together. So then you can forgive because you realize it couldn't have been any other way. And then you realize it was all necessary. Even the unkind part. Your soul is bigger than any event that has ever occurred in your life. So in this I am space, I think of Dr. Emoto that brought to the world awareness in a more scientific way of the power of words. And he would prove under a microscope, a microscope, (laughs) new word, that water, when spoken to with mean and cruel words, the water would change. When it was spoken with love and divine and energy and joy, it would have different crystals. Wow. Our bodies are mostly water. What words are you saying? What are you, what are you seeing as a soul? His last word when he died was abrogado. Thank you. Thank you. End each day of your life by saying thank you with that embrace. 